Good morning. morning. Greet you in Christ's name this morning. Thank you for leading those songs, Elliot. Oh, for a closer walk with God. I hope that's your prayer this morning as we look into God's Word. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we come before you, Lord. We come expecting. Lord, we come with open ears, with open hearts. Lord, I pray that your presence would draw us to worship. Lord, I pray that as we read your word, that we could be challenged. Lord, help us to um, identify new truths for our lives wherever we're at. Lord, may we uh, see ways of of, um, potential growth in our life. And Lord, I pray that we would apply uh, the truths from your scriptures today. Lord, be with Brother Vanson up in Elkhart as he preaches. Lord, bless their service there. Pray for those who attend from Elkhart. Lord, I pray a special blessing on them. Lord, give them understanding ears as they hear. And may your spirit uh, work in their midst there. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Some years ago, our company, our our lawn care company, was asked to do some work at one of the jobs that we maintain. It's a large development of of many different houses, and there's a homeowners association that takes care of outside maintenance for this property. And so you as a homeowner buy the house, but then you pay dues to the homeowner or to the, the association, and then they take care of the outside maintenance. And so we have a lot of older folks who are retired and don't want to take care of the lawn mowing and the tree trimming and whatever it may be. And so this com- this, the association had asked us to do some tree trimming there. And these trees had not been, in my evaluation, hadn't been trimmed properly previously. So um, they were getting quite low and they were, you know, it was hard to see in underneath them. And when I trim a tree, I don't like to trim it every year. And so I I like to go at it the first time, and so that's what we did, and we started trimming these trees, and we were, I was really pruning them. I have a a pole saw, and it doesn't take very long. I mean, in about four short cuts, the ground is covered with a bunch of limbs, and there's a bunch of cleanup, and we got quite a bit of different response. Some of the people were really happy, but this, this one gentleman, as I trimmed his tree, he stepped out of the door, and he was furious. And he began to just tear into me about how I just destroyed his tree, how he had this nice tree, and now it's just destroyed. And, and he got so mad, he, he cursed and swore at me and called me all kinds of names, and he was just all up in my face about this tree. So at this point, I have two things I can do. I can either defend myself and and. and say, hey, I have to trim your tree, right? And this is why it should be trimmed. Or I can just kind of let him blow off. And I I chose to do the latter. And so I I let him blow off, and he he really gave it to me. And when he got done, I I explained to him that what we're trying to do is we're trying to trim up these trees because if we don't trim them up now, eventually the branches are going to get into the eaves of your house, and and you're going to have a mess. and, And once the tree gets mature then it's harder to trim the branches because they're so big. And so I, I tried to explain that nicely, and it, it, it just didn't, it didn't really appease him. He was pretty upset. And so I said, well, okay, we'll, we'll um, I didn't tell him this, but I decided I guess I won't trim up everything that I thought would need to be trimmed, but we, we trimmed off a few more branches, and, and we stopped with that to try to, kind of appease him. He went back and he stomped back into his house with not much more conversation. And that's how we left it. So we we finished trimming, took us a couple hours, and then we began to mow at this property. And this was several hours later. I was mowing across the street and as I was mowing, he came out the front door and proceeded to come across the street. And I thought, oh boy, here we go, round two. And he came over and he said, well, he said, uh, you know, he said, uh, <clears throat> I got a little upset at the way, uh, you know, you trim my tree. And, and uh, yeah, I, I probably responded, 
probably in a way, I, I probably shouldn't have quite responded like that. And he said, uh, you know, he said, I, I think with the way that you trimmed it, the sun might be able to shine in a little bit more. And he said, that, you know, that's, that's probably a good thing. It, the tree doesn't look very good right now, but he said, I, you know, I, I, it, it's probably going to be all right. And I, just, I probably shouldn't have talked to you like that. And I, I said, you know, I said, I appreciate you saying something to me. I said, that, that feels good. I said, I most definitely forgive you for your response. And um, we had a little more discussion about the tree trimming. And I said, I hope that in the long run, having the tree trimmed up, that you can enjoy it and that it will, it will be better for the tree. That's one instance where I maybe responded in a proper way to a conflict. I wish I could say that's how it's always been for me. It hasn't. But how do you respond when you're confronted with conflict? How do you respond when somebody's upset? When there's something, you know there's something between you and you're not sure what to do about it. How do you respond in those situations? What effect does it have on the other party, your response? Turn with me to Romans chapter 12. We're going to look at another verse in Romans Romans chapter 12, verses 17 and 18, and I invite you to stand up with me. I'd like to read this together. Have it up on the overhead here if you care to read it, or if you want to turn your Bibles, that's fine too. Romans chapter 12, verses 17 and 18. Read with me. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. You may be seated. Today's verse is verse 18. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. You know, in some ways, the first part of that verse, if it be possible, gives the idea that eh, there's maybe a question here. Maybe it's not always possible. Maybe there are times where it's not possible to diffuse a situation or to live peaceably. Sometimes it takes work. If it be possible. An if. But I think we're to do as much as possible to keep the peace and to appease those around us to appease their anger or maybe the malice that we sense from them. What can I do to defuse the situation? What can I do? You know, sometimes it's very difficult to work through some of those situations. But I believe it's essential that we work through them because, you see, when I don't have a peace with my brother, when I don't have a peace, peace with a customer or with somebody that I know or somebody in my family, maybe if I don't have peace with my spouse in our relationship, you see it affects my relationship also with God. When our relationships among us are struggling, when there's conflict in those relationships, it's, it's hard to have an open relationship with our God, with our Father. Second phrase says, as much as lieth in you. I think it's important that we give an honest attempt at reconciliation, at working through a conflict. It's important that we give an honest attempt on my part to do, to, to come to a peaceful place. You see, It says, as much as lieth in you. There's a responsibility on me in that verse. As much as lieth in me, if it be possible, as much as lieth in me. It's not pointing to the other party, but it's putting the responsibility on me. What is my responsibility? How do I take responsibility to myself for this situation? What do I do to help diffuse it? What do I do to work through the conflict? And when I can focus on that, rather than looking at the other party and saying, well, if they would just come, or if, if, 
if he would just do this, or if they would do that, that would take care of this situation. Rather than looking at them, looking at myself and saying, what can I do? What can I do in this situation to bring peace in this relationship? What can I do to work through this conflict? What's my responsibility as much as lieth in you, in me? There's a verse in Psalm. Psalms 34, 14 says, Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. So the idea of seeking peace, looking for it. Where's it at? How can I get, how can I get this peace? And then when I get a glimpse of maybe this would be a way to work peace in this situation. And then pursuing it. Chasing after it. You young men know what it is to pursue something. Recently, we have a friend who, um, their family is serving in Greece. They're serving the, um, the refugees the, in a refugee camp there. They're, they're trying to witness to these refugees. And we had this family over to our house several weeks ago, and, and they have some boys uh, ranging probably 10 to 15. And if, if you know what boys in that age group enjoy, it's, it's anything that is remote control. And these boys were telling us how when they were home in the States of like in the last year or two, they bought a drone and they took it to Greece and they said they enjoy flying this drone, right? That's a lot of fun. And so one day they went to a park and these boys were flying their drone and as they they brought it down, they said they landed it in the street and just as they landed, there was one of these refugees was walking past and to his amazement, this drone just came down right beside him on the street. He just ran over and picked it up and took off running. And these boys from the Originally from the, well, no, they were from Ireland, Ireland, I guess. But here they bought this drone in the U.S. They can't just go buy another one at the store. And this guy picks up their drone and runs off. And the oldest one said, I just took off after him. He said, I ran him down. And he said, I told him, no, you can't have that drone. And I got it back. That drone was important to him. And he pursued it until he got it. And he took it back. You see, that should be my response when I see a glimpse of, oh, I could possibly make peace in this situation like this. And then I pursue it. I chase it down. What can I do to bring peace to this situation? Find it and pursue it. Because I really want it. Pursue it. You know, sometimes I have to ask myself the question when I'm constantly in conflicts and it seems like it's just never ending. I work through one situation with a relationship and there's another one to take its place. And when I work through that one, there's another relationship or there's another conflict. And when it feels like I'm constantly bumping into people, sometimes I think it's important that we step back and evaluate and say, maybe, just maybe, it might be something in my heart. Maybe it's something in my life that's causing these conflicts. Am I aware of what it is? Or do I always point to everybody else and say, well, it's their fault. It's because of their response, or it's because of how they did this, or that. Am I constantly pointing out to others and saying it's their fault? Or do I take some of the responsibility saying, maybe I'm playing a part in this. Maybe there's something in my heart that needs to be cleaned. Maybe there's something in my heart that stirs other people up and brings conflict. There's a verse in Romans 14, 19 that says, Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace. And the things wherewith one may edify another. And so maybe there's things that I can do different in my life that will cause less conflict that I have to resolve. Are there things that I can pursue? Are there ways that I interact with people that cause more conflict than is necessary? Is it something that I'm bringing to this relationship that's causing it?
last part of this, verse 18 says, If it be possible, as much lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Who am I, who are we called to live peaceably with? With all men, with all, I would say, friends, with all who are in like faith, with all who have differing beliefs, maybe, with all who have different interests, different practices. All means all. Live peaceably with all men. How do you do that? When we have different interests and beliefs, how do we live peaceably with them? You know, I think sometimes we tend to make war with people instead of war with sin. When in fact, I think we're called to make war against sin and peace with people. Make war with sin and peace with people. You see, peace is often accomplished by making choices that don't always serve my best interests, but serve the best interests of the other party. You see, they, they get the advantage. It doesn't always play into me getting the advantage. You see, conflicts with others affects the peace that I can, that I feel in my heart. It's hard to have peace in my heart when there's constantly conflicts that I'm faced with around me. And you see, sometimes the rewards of peace are experienced just by pursuing peace. Sometimes we can't actually come to a a resolve, or maybe the situation isn't, isn't totally taken care of. But sometimes, maybe the person that we're in conflict with is able to lay it down, and we can both come to a peaceful place even if the situation hasn't changed, just because we're both trying. You see, when I see you making effort, when I see you making movement towards trying to make peace, that starts to affect me. A couple years ago, I had a, a person um, that it seemed like every year or two he would call me and want a quote on his lawn for fertilizer. And he wasn't a customer of mine, but I do some in his neighborhood. I knew who he was. And he would just call me up and say, hey, can you, or he'd leave me a message. He'd say, can you give me a quote on my lawn? And it came to the point where, you know, finally I had, I had records. Oh, yeah, this guy, he called two years ago. I looked back, 2019, I would show, I gave him a quote. And so I got, I got frustrated with it. He would always check my price, and then I'd never hear anything from him. And so I assumed he was using another company. I knew he was using another company. And the lawn was pretty small, and so I knew I, knew I had to be within probably $20 of another application. And I felt like if I'm within $20, if he really wants me to do it, he should just hire me. And so finally, one day he called again, and he wanted a quote. And I called him back, and I gave him a quote. And he said, okay. He said, uh, yeah, let me, let me think about it. Same story. And so I finally said, I said, Nate, what would it do, what would it take for me to earn your business? Because honestly, I didn't know. I thought, his na- I did his neighbor's yards. I thought they looked good. I- he said, you know, he said, maybe by you just asking that, he said, that might be what it takes. He said, come to think of it, he said, yeah, he said, would you take care of my lawn this year? And I've done it ever since. Now, I didn't lower my price. I didn't promise anything I didn't I don't know I guess at that point he maybe felt like I cared about him or that I cared about his lawn and you see sometimes that's how it is when we have conflict maybe we don't aren't actually able to resolve that conflict and both come out and say yeah you you know I made a mistake you made a mistake this is what caused it but sometimes by us By me seeing that you're making effort in resolving that, I can say, you know what? That's what it's going to take. I feel like like you understand 
where I'm coming from. And then I'm able to come to a good place personally. Maybe sometimes we have to look at people around us and say, what can I do to earn a relationship with you? What will it take? Maybe that's what they're waiting on. Hebrews 12, verses 12 through 15 says, Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees, and make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Sometimes that root of bitterness can become planted in, and we allow it as a seed to be planted in our hearts. Brothers and sisters, that brings conflict when there's bitterness in my heart. Bitterness against others. Bitterness against situations. Bitterness against authority. Whatever it is. Those things begin to fester. And they affect those around us. They spring up. They trouble And many are defiled. You see, bitterness doesn't just affect me. But it begins a conflict in a larger group. It begins creating conflict in people around me. In my relationship with them. In my relationship in the person that has conflict with them. It begins to affect and affect in huge ways. Sometimes it seems like it's easier just to avoid conflict. I'll just sweep it under the rug. I don't need to face it. But you see, I think peacemaking is not actually avoiding conflict. Because often when conflict is avoided, the conflict gets postponed. And then when conflict is postponed, it is often intensified. Peacemaking is not avoiding conflict. Conflict avoided is often conflict postponed. And a postponed conflict is often intensified. And so instead of taking care of the root issue, instead of taking care of this conflict, I say, ah, oh, it's no big deal. I'm just going to, I'll just push it off. I'll let it go. I'm not going to deal with it. And often what happens is all we did was just kick the can down the road as such. And eventually, it comes up. And now it's not just a small thing, but it, it is intensified while we let it fester and while we let it grow there. It's, it now, it's become a big thing. It's a big thing to me and it's a, maybe a big thing to somebody else, the other party. It becomes larger than what it really should. And now we really have to deal with something. Avoiding conflict is not taking care of it. Several ways to deal with conflict. The first one, deal with conflict early. A conflict addressed early is often resolved quickly. So when I'm aware that there's a conflict, address it and deal with it. Talk about it. Work through it. Resolve it quickly before it becomes a big thing, before it comes a big deal. A verse in Proverbs says, talks about stopping this. We should stop contention before a quarrel starts. Proverbs 17, verse 14 says, The beginning of strife is as when one letteth out water, therefore leave off contention before it be meddled with. Children, you know how much fun it is to play in a stream, a a small stream of moving water. 
what do you like to do with that moving water? We'd like to get a little bit deeper, right? And so what do we do? We, you stack stones in there and maybe some sticks and, you, and you, you put a barricade up there. You make a little dam and the water gets deeper and you start packing mud in the front side, right? And you seal that thing off because you want the water to get deeper. And aha, now we've got it. Look how deep this water is. And all of a sudden, underneath, a little plug lets loose. And a little bit of mud slips out the backside. And just a little stream of water comes out. But what happens? It begins to wash, right? And it washes that mud out. And pretty soon, the stones go out. And, and everything goes out. And here comes this gush of water. The beginning of strife is when one letteth out water. That's exactly what conflict is like that's not taken care of. When we have strife that we, we put a dam up and we try to stop it, we don't take care of it, it begins to build up pressure. It begins to build up more and more and it gets larger and larger and suddenly there's a little leak that starts coming out in the bottom of the dam and it gushes out. And then there's a bunch of people who are affected by it. Number two, restrain your tongue. James has a lot to say about the tongue. I'm going to read two verses. James chapter 1, verses 19 and 20. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let us be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Now, I've always read that verse. There are three separate things. We need to be swift to hear, slow to speak, and we need to get angry slowly. But I'm starting to wonder if there's not a progression there. Swift to hear, slow to speak, gives way to slow to wrath. Because I'm now listening. I'm listening more than I'm saying. Does listening and being slow to reply and slow to give my feeling and slow to give my response, does it sometimes have a way of cooling off my temper just a little bit? And it allows me to be one that is slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. The wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Am I quick to hear and slow to speak? Restrain your tongue. Under restraining your tongue, control your idols of self-expression. Maybe that's hard to understand. What My point here is, Society today tells us, share your feelings. Let people know how you truly feel. Get it off your chest. Be honest with everyone. Just, just get it out there. And, and I think we've maybe swung a little bit from for years just stuffing everything in, not, not allowing um, how I feel to come out. And so we're now reacting to that and saying, well, that wasn't right. We shouldn't stuff it in, right? Because eventually it's going to be like that spring of water that comes out. We need to let it out. But oftentimes we go from that side and now it, it, the pendulum swings to the other side. So now it's self-expression. Society would say, get it out there. Let, let everybody know how you feel. And, and this is, we do this through different ways. It can be in personal relationships, just how when we're relating to one another and talking. It can be on social media. Uh, the first thing when I have something that pops into my mind about a, a current event or whatever, I, I get it out there. You know, let everybody know how Kendall feels about this situation. Put it out. But that can be devastating in relationships sometimes. Because if we all just put out everything that comes through our feelings in our mind, it can be a relationship killer. It can be a conflict um, it can raise conflict. It, it can produce conflict. So I think it's important that as as we relate to other people in conversation or whatever it may be online, that if, if, if we're posting things, run it through a, 
a filter first. Uh, be careful what you say. Just because you had the feelings, just because you had the thoughts, doesn't necessarily mean that it's right, that it's the correct attitude to have. But filter it before it goes out. Don't let your own personal thoughts and all your ideas and, and exactly how you, feel, uh, how you feel become your own idol that you put out all the time. This is how I feel. Sorry, it's just who I am. Don't let it become your idol of self-expression. Another one, don't unload on a strained relationship. Speaking about restraining your tongue is be careful. When a relationship, when somebody you've, you're having conflict with, if that relationship is already strained, I would say speak with them, but check your heart, your attitude, and check your tongue sometimes. Be careful not to just dump off on them. When that relationship is, is a little grating and is maybe not real, uh, real good and, and uh, when we're not relating well, I just don't think it's wise to dump on that person. Be aware of what you're saying. Be aware of how they're feeling. And check yourself. Be honest with them. Be loving to them. But don't just dump the whole load on them. Don't just tear out the whole dam and say, here you go, this is, how, this is where I'm at. This is how I'm feeling. This is how I see the conflict. And dump it on them. But be gracious in repairing that conflict in that relationship, in that conflict that you may have. You see, seeing a problem and facing it does not always mean that I have to just offload on that person now. I think we can be honest with them without dumping on them. Number three, prepare for the long haul. You see, sometimes when there are deep wounds... It takes a long time to heal those wounds in a relationship. Be prepared for the long haul. This is going to take a while. See, relationships that are damaged don't just get repaired in one weekend. They don't just get repaired in one week. Sometimes they don't get repaired in one year. Sometimes it takes a lifetime. And so be patient. Be patient with the other party. Allow them time to heal, but be in it for the long haul. Just because I don't see change immediately doesn't mean that I should just quit, pursue, pray, try to resolve that conflict, visit it again, continue working on it. Don't just give up. Because you see, small steps over a long time lead to peace. It's a little step forward, one step backwards maybe, two steps forward, maybe one step backward, maybe we slide a little bit more, and then we get some traction and we really make some progress, and then we, but it's slowly moving forward that's important. Take small steps moving forward in those conflicts to resolve them. If I were to give you a recipe for peacemaking, I think it would be found in 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 3 says, Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of, one of another. Love as brethren, be pitiful. And we hit that, that word pitiful and, oh, we shudder. Who wants to be pitiful? For sure not the, the youth men, the young men. We don't want to be pitiful people, right? But pitiful means to be sympathetic, compassionate, and tenderhearted. So we should love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous. Not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrary wise blessing. And so don't 
give evil to others. Don't, don't treat them evilly, but instead, bless them. Reach out to them and bless them, knowing that ye are thereunto called, that ye should inherit a blessing. We all want the blessing, right? We all want blessings. And he's saying, if, if you want a blessing, be willing to give others a blessing. Hand out a blessing to them. Bless them instead of treating them evilly or instead of treating them with contempt. But bless them if you want to be blessed. The last two verses, for he that will love life and see good days. Oh my, how many here want to love life and see good days? We all want that. You bet. We want to have a good life. We want to see good days, right? He that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. So back to the what we're saying, what's coming out. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. Another word we could say is pursue it. Seek peace and pursue it. Like it were your drone that somebody picked up. Chase that thing down. Go get it. Go get that peace. Find that peace. In that relationship. Find that peace. In that conflict. And then he says. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. And his ears are open unto their prayers. Oh. It's such a picture. Can you imagine God looking down and saying. Oh brother. Brother I see, I, I see you. Brother John. I see you brother Dana. I see you. Sister Luella, and, and as you pray, his ears are open, right? He, he's listening. He's attentive. We like when people are attentive and listening to us when we're talking, when we're, when we're saying something. And we like to see that, that face, that, that recognition from somebody, and that, that, that face looking down at us saying, oh, I delight in you. We want to see that from God, right? But the last part of that verse says, but the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. There's nothing more discouraging when I'm talking to somebody and they just turn their back. And they don't want to hear. And they don't listen. And they're not open to what I'm saying. They're not listening to what I'm saying. But you see, there's a responsibility on my part for God to face me, to look at me, to hear my prayers. It's when I'm seeking peace, pursuing it, and blessing others. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers, but the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Brothers and sisters, am I one of those that is doing evil in the conflicts that I face? Am I the one that's refusing to deal with it? Am I the one that's saying, no, let's just let it go. I'm not going to deal with it. It's too big a deal. I'm not, I'm not going to go there. Am I the one that's saying, if they would just move, if they would just come my way, if they would just understand how I feel, Do you ever pray and wonder, where's God at? It feels like God doesn't hear me. It feels like God doesn't even know who I am. It feels like there's no connection here. It doesn't matter what I say or how often I pray or what I read. There's, there's just no connection. May it be that God is not hearing my prayers May it be that there's something in my life that has caused God to turn his face and look the other way? Is there someone, is there a certain conflict in my life that has caused that separation in my relationship 
with God. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Father in heaven, we come before you this morning. God, thank you for for your love. Lord, thank you for caring about us. Lord, thank you for turning your face towards us. Lord, thank you for being a listening ear. And God, I pray that you would help each one of us to to follow you, to pursue conflict and to pursue peace in the conflict, to pursue a, a, um, a remedy for whatever that conflict may be or maybe um, resolving a relationship issue, whatever it is. Lord, you know the hearts of each one of us. God, you know the individual things that we face. You know the things that maybe have been going through our mind even this morning. God, maybe we say, I don't really want to deal with that. I don't really want to go there. And Lord, I pray that your spirit would move among us. God, I pray that you would bring resolve to deal with those. Lord, I pray that we would purpose in our hearts to face those head on. Lord, help us to pursue it. Like we want it. Lord, help us to pursue that peace, whatever it is, however we get there. Lord, as we see ways, as we see maybe a glimmer of hope, Lord, help us to pursue it. Help us to take the responsibility. I'm going to ask you just to keep your eyes closed. I'm going to invite you this morning, if there's... there's something in your life, in your heart that you feel convicted about this morning, I'm going to invite you to come forward. I'm going to invite you to come forward and make a statement to Satan that I'm going to deal with this, that I'm going to move forward in this situation, that I'm going to give my best, do my best to resolve this. I'm going to invite you to come forward. If there's anyone, I invite you to come forward and pray with somebody. Make a commitment to them to take care of it. Bless you. Is there anyone else? Father in heaven, I just pray a blessing on each one who has responded. Lord, I pray that you would work in their lives and hearts. Lord, whatever it is that they're facing, I pray that you would give them a resolve this morning to to deal with that, to bring it before you. And Lord, I pray that each one of these would again sense your face turning towards them. Lord, that they would sense you hearing their prayers and that they would experience the openness with you again. Lord, I pray that you would bless them. Could we have some of you respond and maybe take um, maybe some of you sisters. We need four sisters. If you would just come and pray with some of these sisters that came forward and then three men. And I encourage you as you pray with them that, that you would share a resolve with whoever prays with you to check in with you again, that you would deal with whatever the conflict is that you're facing. If you want to go maybe back to some of the classrooms or up front here, that's fine, wherever. We have two more men.
Brent, would you help? Let's bow our heads for prayer. Father in heaven, thank you for your spirit moving among us. Lord, I pray that you would um, be with each one of us. Lord, help us to examine our lives and our hearts. And Lord, help us to uh, deal with those situations that cause conflict. Lord, I pray that you would... um, Help each one of us to live open lives and have open hearts. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen.